This is Art Fuse. Four students will work together to create a collaborative art piece. The artists only have 20 hours to turn an old office space into a large-scale installation. Through smashing, shattering, tying, and twisting, they will rebuild the space to create one final piece. But will this artsy quartet be able to transform boring desk items into a masterpiece before the clock runs out? Hello and welcome to Art Fuse, the show that focuses on artist collaboration with the time crunch. Official figures show that 9 in every 10 schools in the UK have had to cut back their art lessons due to lack of funding. And there's less people applying to study art at university than ever. At ArtFuse, we want to highlight students throughout the UK affected by losing their art programs closing. This episode, our four artists are from the University of Kent, where their School of Music and Fine Arts will shut after this summer. They had 20 hours to create a collaborative installation, which has been entered into the 2019 International Sunny Arts Prize. I'm your host, Holly Tidwell, here to guide you through the roller coaster of this crafty show. All right, enough of me. Let's meet the women who might take Tracy Emmons' job in a couple of years' time. I've always been creative. Um, I can't imagine not being ever creative in my life. My children are, uh, my twins are nine now. Um, and my oldest is 15, so they're, they're all quite independent. So it's my turn now to carry on my journey and um, establish myself in the world. So the kind of art that I make, I would say, is about life and people. So it's based on my identity and the components that make this so, including imperfection and life experiences. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm from Gillingham and I study fine art at University of Kent. I've been kind of going into installation lately, uh, so for the last work I created, I created some stuff with net curtains because I was like, looking at the privacy and the boundaries that we have within our home. My name is Lena and I'm from Cyprus and I study here at the University of Kent. I mean I've been drawing all my life, but uh, really painting I started when I was 13 or something for school and I discovered that's what I was really good at and I liked, so I just continued with that. And it all kind of like goes down to I guess my faith in God because like I believe that he's like the creator of everything and so like he understands us more than we sometimes understand ourselves because so right now my work is looking at um, my identity and how certain life experiences have molded and shaped me. I then discovered um, a passion for light and it has stayed with me but my, my recent pieces have been mostly working with the medium of light um, and working with uh, acrylics. If you can see that behind me, the Perspex code. Um, it shows the reflections, the colour, the reflections, the movement, just sort of the whole package of everything that supports my practice. The school being shut down, I think it's affected quite a lot of us, but it affects us in the way where we feel like we're kind of being pushed out as well. Because um, obviously there's no years behind us, we feel like slowly over the years there's less and less of us but I feel like it's made us like want to fight more for like opportunities and stuff. When I have an idea, I don't stop until like it's complete or until I achieve it. And I just like creating, whether it be drawing, sketching, or even like just doing graphic design. Yeah, so I use like underwater sounds because like I find um kind of I want to take the views on this kind of journey of being from like because I have anxiety, so I want to take them from a kind of space where everything is a bit full on, so you're kind of diving down into the space where you're underwater and it's all kind of like dreamlandy. My favourite piece is uh, one where it's kind of like a self-portrait and I, I feel like it did really well in the short time I made it. I'm an intelligent, strong lady who pursues her ambitions. I'd like my children to see that. I think that's part of the reason I have carried on and come back into education at such a late age to prove to them that you can do anything, you know, you, age doesn't stop you and you can pursue your hopes and dreams. Well look who has joined me on the sofa. Hello everyone.
everyone. I hope you're all doing fabulous. Hey. Hi. Good. Hi. So tell me a little bit about your university experience. Your course was shut down in 2017. Will you be able to finish your degree? What's happening? Yeah, we, we, we will be able to just finish our degrees and then, then it was all closing. Um, so, but <clears throat> it's been a bit thin on the ground with support because everyone, it's all sort of fizzled yeah. out, isn't yeah, it? And still sort of left behind. Yeah, yeah. it was off the driftwood. Yeah. yeah, the teachers seem to be just leaving yeah. and then there's less equipment and stuff like that. I could only imagine. <laughs> um, we're all excited to see how your first day went. The clock has started and our four artists have 20 hours to turn beastly office supplies into a beautiful work we of art. We do stuff to individual items and then at the end we can kind of bring it all together to make an installation. Yeah, yeah. I think so. First of all I'm thinking wow you know it's amazing what we've got there, a little array of office equipment and stuff but then I'm thinking oh god what are we going to do with all this? So I think, you know, okay, let's just clear everything off the table and, and, and just turn everything upside down and inside out and rearrange it to look at it in a different perspective uh, and then just uh, dismantle it and then we just start sort of putting things together. <laughs> Who let Tracy tip the table over herself? My bad. <laughs> should we, should we, should we have some stuff hanging like this? So first up the holes. Um, when I first saw the office set up, I was quite intimidated because there was a lot going on and it was uh, materials that I wasn't familiar with using, like in art. So I didn't know um, what approach I had initially, but then as I started to feel around the different objects, I started to have an idea of what I wanted to do. <laughs> At least someone finds humour in this. It was a bit overwhelming because you look at it and you're thinking, how do I even start with this? <laughs> yeah. Finally, they have a plan. So we're planning on making these kind of strings that hang down around as if like it's growing out of the computer screen that's on the floor. And then all the other objects that have been broken up and um, made into art are like going to be kind of hanging around. So it's kind of like a spatial sculpture thing. <laughs> only art students are protected. Change a lot, <laughs> <laughs> so when I painted the keyboard, I kind of used a lot of different colors because we got many different paints. I kind of may go like a rainbow color, like from yellow. <laughs> uh, I got the frame from that fell out of a monitor, and um, I'm just thinking that's the main kind of equipment in an office. You know, we changed the point of view into a creative point of view, so making art the main thing, framing art. The telephone was a bit plain looking and I kind of started putting like these wires into it but I wasn't too sure about it and I thought well we have so many newspapers and anyway, maybe I can try and decorate it a bit and uh, just try out different things to make it a bit more interesting looking. Looks like their plan is taking off. I'll just tell their eyes off. I went to a vase that the flowers were in and I put the light bulb from the lamp into the top of the vase and I glued it, I secured it. Then I started to round the eyes from the stress ball around the vase and it started to look like, ironically, a office person. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get into the screen now. With each artist working on their own project to add to the piece, they're sure to finish in time. The artists have faced their biggest task yet. How to open the computer monitor. Yep, you guessed it. Tracy is going to smash it. It was a great feeling throwing it, just just to smash something on the floor. I mean, it's um, it's something I think all creative people want to do. Just just like to just destroy what you can see and rebuild it. Hulk smash! I think that's the main kind of concept that keeps creative people ticking. Then we started like prying it open and like all the layers of it came out, like the circuit board and the screen. And you find like all these little bits in there like that you could start using. So everything's in pieces and somehow now that they're smaller, it just makes the whole setup look a lot less. But as we build it up, like when we hang it from the ceiling, it's gonna look maybe a lot fuller and spacious. Day one is over and as you can see, our artists have completely destroyed the office space. But let's see if they can turn this mess into something beautiful. 
You are all off to such a great start. I couldn't imagine creating art out of office supplies. So could you walk me through your inspiration for the piece, the theme, the meaning behind it? Well, it was inspired by, obviously, where offices are being put into, like, our studio spaces. Obviously, it's been taken over, so it was like, yeah, so the items that are kind of, like, taking away our art thing, too, and then yeah. we make that into art. Oh. Did you enjoy smashing the computer screen, Tracy? Did immensely. Yeah, yes. immensely. Mm -hmm. Did you get some frustrations out? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So according to a BBC, BBC survey, 1,200 schools in the UK found that 9 in every 10 said they had cut back on lesson time, staff or facilities in at least one creative arts subject. Why do you think this is? I think because people don't take art seriously, they don't see it as an academic subject, so they prefer more academic subjects like math, science and like technology and they don't, because they don't see the process behind art, like this like what we just did now, you saw the process and you get to see the process, but they just see the end product and they judge it. And then they think, oh, that, that was just made like in an hour or so, but there's so much time and process and like thought that goes into it and they don't really see that, so they judge it incorrectly. And what could be some greater effects of this? I think it would lead to a lot of students or people about to go into university who think that um, the subject is not worthy of picking because yeah. not many people oh, This is heavy. I think it's time for a break. But don't go away. When we're back, we'll see more of this artsy bunch creating their installation. Hello and welcome back to Art Fuse, the show that tests artists' ability to create collaborations in small amounts of time. We're also trying to highlight the importance of art education after official figures show that 9 in 10 schools in the UK have had to cut back on their arts programs. We're joined in the studio by our four artists, Angel, Tracy, Jordan and Lena. Before the break, we saw our artists' first day on their project, where they were overwhelmed, intimidated and maybe even a bit confused but slowly their excitement grew and their plan blossomed. Let's see how their second day went. Good morning. It is day two. I'm so excited to see what our artists create because I believe today they'll actually start piecing together the different parts they've been working on. They're thinking of hanging something from the ceiling and I'm so excited. Let's get some creativity flowing and see what happens. With the smell of paint in the air, the artists are back to work. Also, I normally use like photography and film, so like it's been different like working with my hands and like creating stuff like that, more like sculptural stuff. But like, I think it's made me think of things in different ways, like how to use materials differently. Oh, I felt um, I needed to hang, ha start hanging it and start making a core support for the work. Just get a ball of string and just throw it over it, don't it Okay, let's do that then. Hmm, how are they going to hang that? The fishing wire. The fishing wire. The fishing wire. <laughs> <laughs> We, um, we had a bit of fun trying to um, hang that because we had the fish in my and we felt that one strand wasn't strong enough so then we had to just keep throwing the roll over the beams. So everyone tried to get the fish in wire over the rod on the ceiling but they all somehow like failed. <laughs> but when I tried it I got it on my first attempts which I was quite proud of and we, it was successfully over the rod and we managed to make a stronger structure for the installation. And um, yeah, I, I didn't really know how to do it, um, but you work it out and then, um, y you know, you kind of come together, you work as a team and you kind of problem solve your way through it. And, and, and we got there in the end uh, with a lot of fun and games, um, you know, and so now it's, and it's looking good. We've got like, yeah, the lampshade at the top, which got paint all over it. So it's all this kind of creative stuff. And it slowly moves down to like more of the technical insides of it, of the stuff. So like the inside the keyboard and stuff. Yeah, it's fun working as a team. Like, um, I think we all get along pretty well. Yeah, it's, an, it's a good experience just to see like 
how to do all of this like for people because I always work alone. I felt that this whole experience is good for me in the way that I work uh, with my art pieces because it's taking me out of my normal um, work method of like having some kind of structure, I have to have something written down, drawn up, plans made before I even attempt to make anything and this has made me look at it differently and develop differently. And as you go up the installation it starts to get less um, kind of the materials that are used for office become like less obvious and it starts to manifest itself into something more artistic and like combining different materials and becoming a lot more abstract to the point that you can't tell what the purpose of the object was before. Look at that, look at this, look at this. Can you believe this? They're not quite done yet and I can't wait to see what they come up with tomorrow. Oh God, the fishing wire. I thought you would never get it over. But you know what, I'm truly proud of your endurance. So, tell me what it was like working together, because you all usually work alone. What was it like? Lena? Yeah, it was a uh, really different experience for me, because usually I work totally alone, and because um, I do painting. And uh, yeah, it was fun just learning how to agree with others and yeah. working out differences. And yeah, I think when you're like, doing mm -hmm. it with other people, you kind of have to keep their like, ideas in mind, so you don't like... Yeah. And, but it's good, because like, once you all kind of agree on an idea, it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What do you think, Tracy? Yeah, no, it's great. A uh, great experience working together. Um, possibly don't all agree, but you, you kind of come yeah. around and you compromise yeah. to get the thing done. <laughs> You know, you work into one aim and and, and come together. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Angel? Yeah, like what Tracy said, like compromise. So just to make sure you include everyone's idea in the piece and then it just somehow bounces off each other, mm. which is good. Yeah. So you're all quite close to your family. Do they all support your decision to study art? How do they help you? I would yeah. say, yeah, so my family, they do support my art, which is kind of like unexpected like from where I'm from like traditionally but then since I was young they've always like cultivated my gift and like helped me like buying art equipment and making sure that I study art even when I didn't really feel like doing it so yeah. How important is it to have that kind of support <coughs> in your family when making the decision to study art? It's really important I don't think I would have maybe even ended up studying it if not for my parents encouraging me. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. yeah so. so the clock was running out and our Fab Four had only six hours to finish their installation and hopefully make it good enough for the International Sunny Art Prize. Let's see how they got on. It's day three. The hardest art year. So I decided to entertain myself while waiting for them to show up. And finally they arrived. <laughs> So today we're going to add more elements to the structure and create a stronger support system for it. So today is the final day of the artist collaboration. Let's see what they've made so far and if they'll finish in time. Breaking news, it might not work. <laughs> There's a bit of wood in the middle of the canvas. Tracy says it's fine. But Jordan disagrees. <laughs> it's not fine. It's not fine. A section of the wood out if you want to. Oh, I don't really care that much, but... Well, looks like you guys have a lot to do. We'll check back later and see if it works or not. I think it's just bringing it all together today and kind of creating a form. So we've got the hanging bit now, but we want to like have things coming out the sides and we could just use the rest of like the materials that we have to make some other stuff to go with it. Time is running out, but they have a plan to finish the final piece. The idea is that the technology is dismantled, dissected, and it's exploding from the canvas core. How creative. I love it. Yeah. I felt fine with it, you know. I think we're all a bit tired, but the whole thing was about how our school is shutting down and it's happening across the country and probably in other countries too. So we wanted to show like how we can take something like an office job and make it more creative. 
I couldn't have said it better myself, Lena. As time begins to run out, our artists are rushing to complete the final piece. And they finish. Yay, we're done. <laughs> oh my God, we've actually done it. I'm just relieved because when I walked in at the beginning and saw everything then, I thought, oh my God, what are we going to do? But we kept working on it, working on it and working together. And it's, um, it's, all, it's, it's amazing. I can't believe it. We've done it. The final piece is like an explosion of the office. It shows the importance of arts and how this shouldn't be just pushed to the side or seen as insignificant when it can be seen in every aspect of life. It goes from technical and then it gets more crafty with all the little bits and all the knickknacks that go to make your office day more pleasant. Woo! You guys did it! I'm so proud of you. If you could describe the experience in one word, what would it be? Spontaneous. Crazy. Exciting. Different. Why is it different? Because <laughs> that's what that's that's I usually do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we've got a picture of it here. Look how beautiful it is. Yeah? yeah? So can you just sort of walk me through what's happening here and maybe what some items are? Because you can't really tell what they were before. That's the phone, right? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Angel, do you want to? Okay, so from the bottom it starts off more technical, like with the computers and like the keyboard. And as you go up, it gets more creative and artistic. And you can't really tell what the original products were. So like, for example, the pink things with the polka dot, that was from the plastic bottle. And then there's like... Is that, what plates. is that? Is that the carpet? That's the carpet, yeah. that Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the inside of the keyboard. And that's the frame from yeah. the computer monitor. And it's all based on the canvas, although yeah. it's like breaking out like it's been, it's an art piece coming mm. out of it. Mm. So, <laughs> do you guys like the piece, how it turned out, or? I think it's, it's okay. Right. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> it's better looking than what it started it's with. Not bad in 20 hours. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. we could have I planned it a amazing. bit better, but yeah. But it was spontaneous. Yeah. But I think each yeah. individual component is great, but I think it's just the way we brought it together, maybe. Was yeah. a bit. Oh, it's I not, like it. It's not bad. <laughs> hanging, swinging from the chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> so, why do you think arts education matters? Jordan? Uh, well, I suppose it is like a creative <coughs> outlet, and the thing is, they cut arts, but art is used like every day by like lots of people, like yeah. graphic designers and stuff. So it's confusing that they cut it to like, like maths and stuff mm. takes over. Yeah, creative skills are used, you know, everyday academic businesses, whether they, whether they realise they're doing it or not. You know, from when they're printing out on their photocopiers and whatever, typing up and creating them. Um, um, emails and dis you know it's all art creating. Yeah. Where do you where do you think you would be if you weren't studying art? Do you think you would be as happy or no? Yeah, no. no, probably not. No. I think when I'm making art, it does it is like this different kind of passion. Do you know what I mean? So it is <clears> good. <throat> so, yeah. 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 It's an intense little bubble we all live in. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> bubble. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we got for today, so we'll be anxiously waiting to hear if you get the International Sunny Art Prize. I know I'm rooting for you, and we all are too at Art Views. So within 20 hours, our four artists created this beautiful installation out of a boring old office space. That's all for this episode of Art Views. Stay tuned for more.